Hello, this is Defense Mechanism. Uh, I wanted to do a video on the new features and changes for LSDJ 9.2 and the latest version is currently up to version 9.2J which is what I'll be talking about here. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. First thing that I want to talk about is basically just a quick review. Um, LSDJ 9.2 uses a new uh, envelope method, so it's unlikely to work if you are using a previous version of BGB. Um, it probably works in Sameboy and Gambate and um, Emulicious if anyone's using that. Uh, so if you're not using the latest version of BGB, which I think is 1.4, 159, I believe, uh, something like that. Uh, you should definitely do that. Um, for this video, I'm using same boy um, 0.14.5. But that being said, just uh, probably a good policy if you're going to upgrade, just go ahead and grab the newest version of which whichever emulator you're using just to make sure. Otherwise, you might have some weird, um, well, you definitely will have some weird um, volume uh, behavior. Uh, the next thing is the screen map has changed slightly, but it shouldn't be anything too new or confusing. Um, basically, um, all of the letters are visible now, so in case you do get confused, you'd be able to just look and see where you are. Um, it's not like the older versions where only the screen uh, that you're currently on will show what's above or below you. So you can actually get to the project screen from the song screen and the chain screen now, which is um, actually kind of nice. Um, and I believe, yeah, you can't go to the synth screen from the project screen if you're above the song screen, but you can when you're here in the chain screen. So you can go up and navigate this way. So unfortunately it does mean there's no quick, uh, navigating back from the table across the upper row back to the song screen, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, and the Y and W will shift over and, and the, the project screen will too um, when you're on the instrument or the table. So this kind of allows you to get to the synth screen. It also allows you to go from project to phrase um, or from synth to phrase. So that's kind of nice. And then all, always the wave is to the right of, of the synth screen and always the project is to the left. So it's just a lot more consistent. There's not a lot of weird jumping around between the screens. So uh, I find that this has worked really well. Um, it's allowed me to navigate where I want to go without getting too confused about anything or losing my place um, while writing. So that's been great. Uh, the next thing, um, these are just some small visual cosmetic changes. So the, I'm just kind of touching on these quickly. But the, the wave screen has a new cursor, which is this dotted line. And when you make a selection, it'll add another dotted line so then you can do this you can move these up and down you can copy paste you can invert them etc so um, that's also nice uh, well I don't want to skip too far ahead but there is also a new thing that you can do where if you press select when you make a selection it will cancel your selection so it won't overwrite what you've got on the clipboard so that's actually a nice feature um, so on to the next item, live queuing in the song screen. So um, this is actually a cool feature that I believe was taken from the M8 software. Um, I guess I'll just quickly kind of build build out some empty uh, chains and phrases really quickly just to kind of demo this feature. And... Um, Oops. Basically, the uh, this feature kind of blends live mode and song into song mode. So, if if you're playing this phrase, um, and you next want to queue up, say you know this section, you can hold left and press start, and it will actually queue this next. Okay, this is a great song. So it'll skip ahead. So that's something that's nice to be able to do. Well, you know, if you reach the end, but you want to repeat an earlier section, you can you can do this in song mode without having to jump into live mode, which, you know, 
sometimes is fine and other times it's not. It's just easier to press left and start. Although this this may also work in live mode, I guess. Yeah, I, it does work in live mode, but it also works in song mode. So there you go. Cool little feature. Uh, it's pretty handy if you don't want to switch into live mode. Um, the song screen has reduced length now. So normally if you hold B and press down, you'll page all the way through, all the way into the Fs or whatever, C, D, E, F, but those have been removed um, just to kind of free up some extra memory. Um, it's not being reused yet, but it just seemed like um, probably nobody uses songs that are that long, although it is cool to use these um, song screens as like different pages. So if you want to do different arrangements, you know, um, you can do that. But there are only 12 now instead of 16 pages on the song screen. Hopefully it shouldn't break anybody's songs. Um, but, you know, if you do have a song that goes all the way down past this line of the song screen, maybe don't upgrade. Uh, or may, Or break up the song into a couple of different files. Uh, but that's that's all for that. Uh, the Pulse and Noise have a new ENV visualizer, which is really, really cool. So um, as you've heard, our beautiful Pulse instrument uh, has this new default envelope, which is 8.8. Eight. Um, another thing that I should also mention is that a lot of um, tool tips have been added when you double tap A. So double tapping A on this will explain what each of these digits in the envelope do. Um, they've also been added for pretty much every parameter. Uh, so you can go through and double tap there. And I believe that holding select will pause the text. I think I've talked about this before. Um, so that when it's scrolling, you can hold select and it will pause in case you need to read it. But, so let's go and change some of these digits and you'll get to see, you can actually visualize the volume curve, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, you know, so that you can also listen to it, like. So this is pretty fun to play around with. Although uh, I think it was probably fun to play around with before, but now that we've got these um, these new visualizers, it's it's just really uh, handy. I think it um, I think it's really helpful to to demystify what these numbers are in the envelope. Um, so that's the same for pulse and for noise. Um, may as well go ahead and make an, a noise instrument just uh, just to show this. So. Same kind of thing, really helpful for snares uh, when you want to do this kind of like loud transient and then kind of fade it out. Um. It just gives a lot of nice control um, that I used to do in the table. Um, and now, you know, um, this volume column the, has kind of been replaced by this. The main difference is that the envelope um, does not depend on tempo. So if you change the tempo of your song, you may have to adjust the timing of this envelope uh, to match the new tempo. So I, that's probably all for this one. Let's move on to the next feature. The redesigned free and stable pitch in the noise instruments. Um, which is actually now called safe. I should have put that on on this text, but it's called safe now. So um, the main difference is for a while that safe pitch or stable pitch was removed um, because it seemed like it actually wasn't doing anything, but some more research was done on the, the sound chip. And depending on the model, whether you've got Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color or a DMG, um, the noise channel behaves a little bit differently. So normally on on some later models of Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, the noise channel is pretty accurate and it um, behaves nicely. So you can do a pitch sweep down. And let's just lengthen this a little bit. 
Maybe bring this down. So your noise instruments won't just randomly cut out on these models. Um, however, on, um, on a DMG, this noise behavior can sometimes randomly mute. And basically the workaround for that is anytime it changes pitch, it will retrig the noise channel. So that's what the safe behavior does. And it also changes the timbre of the sound quite a bit. It's a little bit harsher of a sound. Um, and it's just a little bit less smooth. One thing that I really think that this benefits though is noise kicks. So if I just make a quick kind of noise kick, something like this maybe we'll just kind of we'll increase the pitch uh downwards and then i'll just kind of shorten this um make it more of a similar envelope to what it was so you can kind of hear the difference between the safe and the free like it just adds a little bit more of that extra bass because we're restarting the noise channel on every tick. Um, is it every tick? Yeah, it's every tick. Um, every time the pitch changes, so. Depending on kind of where you start it and what your pitch curve is here. Um, I really think it's, it's good for noise kicks and, and sometimes for snares too. Uh, I mean, I like to use it on all of my snares because that means that when I'm playing on hardware, I know the noise channel will never cut out. Um, so I think that's really, really helpful. And then, of course, um, if you want something like a cymbal crash or, you know, these cymbal crashes will still sound good when you keep them on free pitch. And for the most part, I find that it behaves all right. But for something crazy where you're kind of like chaining a bunch of different commands and you don't really know you don't really know what you know your results going to be it can be good to uh to set it to safe mode and i think it's exciting because um this is like a sound that hasn't really been possible in the noise channel um unless you were to like use our commands to retrig on every tick and stuff so there's a potential for new sounds out of this i think um, but we'll kind of get to the, more of that later. So let's look at the next feature here. Oh yeah, we've got uh, transpose on and off. So this means like if you have a snare uh, that you want to sound at this pitch every time, but you still want to, you know, you want to transpose your noise hats or something up, uh, up or down to kind of get some variety um, that your snare will not follow this transpose. So optionally, if you want to turn it off. So that's a nice new feature that hasn't been implemented previously. Ah, the Wave channel has new sample playback. Um, you might have seen a couple of my videos about this um, that I posted briefly on Twitter and Instagram uh, for the new Intense Tech, um, which was covering, I think I covered everything up to 9.2i. And this is... Um, oops. This is one of the main reasons uh, why 9.2 needs, um, there's just, you know, it um, kind of redid a lot of the timing in order to, to improve the sample quality, uh, sample playback. So let's go in here and load up a kit. I think the default 606 is probably fine, so. It's not, um, it's not the most noticeable. I think th uh, where I noticed it the most was probably in some of these like 707 samples.
especially this chime. The high end is just like there. It's very present. Um, and I also think that the the kick drums and stuff, like the low end is, is very clear. There is a new version of the patcher out. Um, I think it's like 1.11.6. And that, if you have sources for your samples, I think it's worth repatching them. Kits are, are stored in a slightly different format now. And um, with some good dithering and some... Um, I don't even think it really needs that much sample prep, but it, just repatching the samples um, seems to be uh, a big improvement in the way that they sound. Like the chimes are very clear. Um, I, I, it's a little bit less buzzy. Um, I think it's just kind of overall a, a really good improvement and it took some revamping of the timing engine uh, to get this to, to work out, so. That this is one of the big ones. New wave synth phase. Let's go make a new phrase here. Um, so, or did I say phrase instead of phase? Um, new wave synth phase. So, this I'm referring to this phase setting. Um, one of the big, yes, I th think that. I must have scribbled around in here. Um, I, I can't remember when this was actually implemented. It might have been here for uh, 9.1, but um, this phase setting has got basically proper aliasing now. So um, this might be more visible with a square wave. You can kind of see that these, let's, let's raise up the volume a little more. Um, These little kind of connecting, you know, samples are now kind of like interpolated. It's not, it's not the greatest with this example. Let's try this one. Yeah, you can kind of see that they kind of shift around instead of just like sh straight, you know, left and right. Like it, it results in essentially a smoother sound. So if I turn this on to once and, you know, let this play, then we can hear it. Let's put it on loop, whoops, not speed 12. Or let's put it on ping pong. So it's like a really smooth sound. Let's go all the way up to one F. Uh, it's just super, super clean and good. Warp is kind of similar. Uh, the new uh, resync phase um, is much smoother than the old resync. It's kind of like the resync two. It's just less harsh um, because it has less aliasing. But if you still want to go full alias, this resync two is actually the same as the previous resync. So you can get that harsh, like just kind of brutal. Um, and like you can see here, see how each one of these samples retains its position as you go until it gets too kind of squashed. Whereas like if you compare that to this resync, these move kind of smoothly up and down. So that results in kind of a smoother sound. And you can see like these kind of retain their like up, down, up, down. Whereas with this one, you know, it's, it's there, but it's, it's more just repeated cloning. There's not, there's less variation. Each sound has its own use, I think. Um, you can get a smoother sound, you can get a harsher sound. There's just more room for control, and I like that a lot. Uh, so next, new wave instrument resync. Now this is actually not the same as, as the synth resync. This is something else. So uh, this is probably best heard at a faster tempo. So let's bump this up to like 168. Essentially, um, it's a reintroduction of the feature where you could get um, an extra tone generated by the clicks in the wave channel um, at really fast wave synth speeds. Which I think, uh, let's use a more extreme wave. We might have a better example. Okay, so this sounds like a pretty clear, you know, D3 pitched sound. Um, Previously, 
you know, the wave channel didn't have that silky wave. So there were always clicks that were being generated when the wave, uh, the waveframe would switch. And so to kind of bring back that feature, there's now a resync play, which basically disables silky wave and it switches the waveframe in the middle of it to kind of generate that extra tone. So still, it might sound better at a faster tempo. So, yeah, compared that to this, that's only one sound, but this, you know, just allows that a kind of extra tone, um, which is pretty cool. Ah, now here's another big one. We've got new tempo settings, which are 2x, 3x, and 6x, and that refers to the screen refresh. So essentially, um, the new timing is based on the screen refresh and can result in some tick lengths differing by a couple of milliseconds. Um, with these tempos, um, which go all the way above 295, so this is your normal super fast tempo, and then if you press right, you go to the 2x tempo, which is about 299 BPM, and all of the ticks at this speed are equal. So, um, this allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. Let's head over to the noise channel and uh, make a new instrument and make a new table for this instrument. And you can do this kind of thing where you're, you know, turning these pitches off and on with the O command. So you can generate these extra tones. Um, and of course, there's a lot more than just this, like, there are a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, you know, because your ticks are so fast. This is, you know, it's not that much faster than 295, but if we bump up to 3x, you know, this is somewhere around 400 and some BPM, so. Um, and you can do really all kinds of crazy stuff. It's, it doesn't really sound that impressive. I'm, and I... uh, it, I would say it is recommended to set your groove to something that is much higher because otherwise it's basically impossible to sequence. So, um, and then of course 6X is just nuts. It's about 800 BPM. This will probably crash a DMG. So there are lots of possibilities. Um, I'll link to a guide in the comments that features um, some more techniques. You know, there are different things you can do like changing these tables um, to be more like this. This will allow you to have different tones, things like that. Um, and there are a lot of possibilities. So between all of these new features, um, I'm really curious to hear, like, what's your favorite? Uh, what are you most excited about? Um, did I leave anything out? Did I forget anything? Um, do you think you're going to upgrade? Uh, do you think it's worth upgrading? What features do you think you'd like to see if there are some that haven't been implemented yet? And um, that's mostly it for me uh, for this video. So I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. Uh, if you want to join Patreon, there will be a link below or to support me um, in other ways. And um, I hope to see you soon.